This is the 11-2 uh, notes. Your objective today is that you can create a box and whisker plot. So today we're going to be learning about box and whisker plots. Uh, box and whisker plots, as you can read, shows a variability of a, of a data set along a number line using least value, greatest value, and the quartiles of the data. The quartiles divide the data into four equal parts. Sounds like a quarter. We talked about that a little bit whenever we, um, was, we were talking about in the warm-up. The median um, is kind of at the end of that second quartile. It's the half. It divides the set into two equal halves. Uh, the median of the lower half is the first quartile, is what we call the first quartile. Uh, and then the median of the uh, upper half is called the third, third quartile. Um, so we, there's kind of five numbers that we need to know about. There's the least value. There's So that's... One. There's a second quartile, which is two. There's the median, like the actual median, that's three. There's the third quartile, which is four. And there's the greatest value, which is five. So there's kind of five aspects that we need to know about in order to be able to make a good box and whisker plot. Um, also kind of things to know, whiskers are the kind of lines uh, going in. And then boxes are, well, they're the boxes. Uh, some people do prefer to use this, peer, this point. Um, I'm not a huge fan of it because I feel like a lot of times, especially whenever I, like, I was a kid, um, I would always kind of lose where my point was because my line was as thick as my point. Um, so a lot of times you might see me doing a straight up and down line just to kind of at the, at the end of it. Um, there is kind of one further thing that we need to know about box and whiskers before we really get into them. And it's what we call skew. And that what this is, is this talks about the shapes of these box and whisker pots. And the way that I kind of go about it is we're talking about box, box and whiskers. Uh, whenever I think of whiskers, I think of a little kitty cat or a bunny rabbit. Yeah, it's a really good bunny rabbit in case you're wondering. And if his whiskers go way off to the left, as we're looking at the bunny rabbit or cat or whatever or mouse if it's way out to the left then that's skewed left because that whisker is far off to the left it's longer than that right side skewed to the right again you can kind of imagine your little bunny rabbit or mouse or whatever you want very generic form right there and this is skewed right because the whisker is longer off to the right or yeah well, off to the right um, and this kind of tells us that most of the data is on the left-hand side. Um, the final option is symmetric. So again, thinking my little bunny rabbit or mouse, the whiskers are symmetric. They're about the same length. And that's kind of really an important thing is it should be like you should you don't need to necessarily calculate it and be like mm, yes this is you know 0.157 longer it's like and eh, they look about the same we're going because as long as you're using equal values on your on your number line you're completely fine all right let's do a couple examples let's make some box and whisper plots so number one hours of sleep we have seven nine eight eight uh three eights six six five and four seems like my sleep schedule um, so we're going to kind of do these hours of sleep whenever we're making a box and whisper plot it's really kind of imperative that we first start off on the right foot and what that right foot is is putting them in order and so i'm going to lay everything out in order so my first one is a four then i have a five then i have two sixes six comma six i have a seven I have three eights, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then I have a nine. All right, so we have this information and we need kind of the five keys. There's kind of five keys. I think up here we use the term, um, the five number summary. And so the five number, su number summary that we need is we need to know the least, we need to know the greatest, and I kind of list these uh, in order of how I'll probably find them. I need to find the median, and then I need to find what we call the um, 
first quartile or the lower quartile, and this is kind of more like the lower quartile median location, and then we need to find the upper quartile. And this will start making a little bit more sense here in a second. So uh, let's start off with least. What's my least number whenever they're all sorted and organized? It's a four. What's my greatest? It's a nine. What's my median? And so my median, it's just like any other time I do a median. So I go, okay, four, nine, five, and eight, six, and eight, six, and eight, and then I have a seven. Now, I guess I'll just start stop there and say, okay, my median then is seven. It's my middle number. Whenever we have the median be actual one of the numbers that we have on our in our um, in our lineup, and it lands on one of the numbers, so it, this is both the left side and the right side. Then what we're going to do is we're going to acknowledge, okay, yes, that's the median, and then we kind of just say, all right, we're not going to count that anymore. It no longer applies. It doesn't go to the left side. It doesn't go to the right side. So um, we kind of just get to ignore it. Now, now what we need to do is we need to find our lower quartile. And in order to find that, what we're going to do is we're going to find the median of the lower portion. So it's that, low, it's that lower quarter. So we're going to find the median of the lower quarter. And we do it much the same way. We're still going, okay, 4 cancels out 6, and then I'm left with 5 and 6. Now I'm left with two numbers, and if I get rid of five, then I get rid of six, and I have nothing. And so what this is, and what we're looking for, is we're looking for the median value, which is that middle. And so I go five plus six divided by two, and that is 5.5. And you might be like, eh, I could have just done that in my head. But it's important to know how this works, because they're all not always going to be nice numbers like this. They're not always going to be right next to each other. They might have a distance of like 130, and you're going to be like, oh gosh, I'm not sure, or maybe it's like 131, make it a little more challenging for you. And so you're going to have to try and figure out, okay, what's halfway in between these two. And so adding them together and dividing by two is your best bet. So my lower quartile, the value is 5.5. My upper quartile... I'm doing, again, the same thing as I did in the lower, but on the upper side. And so I go 8 and 9 cancel out, and that leaves me with 8 and 8. Same thing applies. I go 8 plus 8 divided by 2. And so I get 8. Now, this one's a little more straightforward in that you can say, oh, yeah, this is going to be 8 because they're both 8. Yeah, you can do that. All right, so I have my five uh, five number summary. I have the five numbers that I need in order to make this. So let's go ahead and make a number line. Uh, shapes. That's a line. No, that's not the line I want. Not the line I wanted. Try it again. Shape, line. Just make a nice long line here. That one a diagonal. Let's see here. Nope. Okay. We're just going to work with it. All right. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Eh, whatever. Okay. So start with my least number. It's at four. And so I'm going to put, again, most most time you might see this represented as a dot. I like to put a line that way you can kind of see it. My greatest value is nine. Uh, five, six, seven. 8, 9. So again, going to put my dot, or in my case, I like to put that line. The median is 7, so I'm going to go to 7 and draw a line. And then I have um, my lower quartile, which is at 5.5, so I'm going to put a line. And then my upper quartile is at 8, so I'm going to put a line. You might be like, oh my gosh, there's so many lines here. Well, well, the nice thing is we get to kind of just draw everything out. So the first one is the whisker. So we have that left whisker. Now we do a box. Then we do another box. And then we do a whisker. And so this is making a box and whisker plot for the hours of sleep. Let's go do the algebra test scores. 
All right, so again, the first thing that I see is I say, hey, these are all mixed together. Uh, let's re redo this. All right, 63, um, 71, um, 76, 82, 84. There's two of those, 84 and 84. So 84 and 84, um, 88, 88, uh, 92, 92, and 96. All right, and that's everybody. Okay, so go ahead and list out my five number summary. So I need my least value, I need my greatest, I need my median, need my lower quartile, and I need my upper quartile. All right, let's start with the least. Least, pretty simple, right here at 63. Least. And then 96 is my greatest. So this equals 96. All right, my median. Uh, okay, so 63 and 96, 71 and 92, 76 and 88, 82 and 84. All right, we're going to choose 84. And because we landed right on 84, we're going to not count it anymore. And sometimes I like to put this little line like this. And you might be like, oh, does that mean we get rid of this 84 as well? No, it doesn't. We actually don't get rid of this other 84 because we didn't land on it. And it, it, it is a part of this data set that's over to the right. So my median is 84. All right, let's go to our lower quartile. Uh, our lower quartile is on this left-hand side. And that the lower left, it definitely helps a little bit with that. I have a little trick right there for you. All right, so 63 and 82, those cancel out. All right, that leaves me with 71 and 76. So I go 71 plus 76 divided by 2. Uh, let me grab my calculator. 71 plus 76 divided by 2, 73.5 equals 73.5. All right. Uh, 84, 96, that leaves me with 88, 92. So 88 plus 92 divided by 2, that is 90. So my lower quartile is 73.5, and my upper quartile is 90. All right, so let's make a box and whisker plot. I wonder if I can make this a little bit straighter this time. That yeah, seems a little straighter. Okay. Um, I'm going to go try and go by twos. Um, so I'm going to start at 62, 64, 66, 68, 70, 72, 74, 76, 78, 80, 82, 84, 86, 88, 90, 92, 94, 96, 98. I actually only need to go to 96. Six. All right. So let's go ahead and build this. Um, so starting with my least value, let's do this in blue. I'm at 63, which is about right here. My greatest is 96, which is right here. My median is 84, which is right there. My lower coordinate or lower quartile is. 73.5, so something like that. And then my upper quart or quartile is at 90. So uh, kind of a nice long thing there. Make this into a box. And make that and do that. And looking at this, I would probably say that it's skewed left because that wicker, whisker on the left looks a little bit longer than the other side. All right, number three. The box and whisker plot represents the prices in dollars of soccer balls at different sporting goods stores. Find and interpret the range of the data. Okay, so range is kind of the, uh, is 
where we start to where we finish and kind of what our least to our greatest is. And so the range of the data is your least, least, uh, is less than or equal to your or whatever your variable is. So let's just call this P for price. And that's less than or equal to your greatest. Okay. And so we're going to use this and we're going to say, okay, my least is, uh, or sorry, my greatest, let's start with the greatest, is 24.5. And my greatest, or my least, is 8.5. And so what we actually do here is this range, we're actually going to find the spread of the soccer ball cost. And so whenever you hear, like, covering the spread, a lot of times that's a little bit what they're talking about. And so we go 84.5 minus 8.5, uh, that makes 16. And so the range of the soccer balls, it can vary by $16. All right, um, next question, describe the distribution of the data. And in order to do this, all we're actually looking at is the, um, is we're looking at this, at the whisker part. And that's kind of what the distribution is saying. And so I go, all right, 11.25 minus 8.5 equals, if I do that, I get 2.75. And if I do 24.5 minus 20.25, that equals 4.25. And so what this tells us is that it's skewed right. And whenever we're asked to figure out this distribution of the data, it, it definitely helps our eye kind of catch on, I think, a little bit uh, to, oh, yeah, it kind of is skewed a little bit to the right. Like, whenever you first looked at it, you kind of might have been like, oh, it looks pretty symmetrical. But then now that you see, oh, hey, this one is a little bit longer, and you look at it, you're like, yeah, you know what? It actually is. All right. Um, part C, find and interpret the interquartile range of the data. This might be, you can might, um, change this to be IQR, interquartile range. And this, as it sounds, is just talking about this interquartile, these Q2 and the Q3 here. It's talking about, all right, what's going on right here. And so we're going to find just the range in that section. We're not talking about the whole range. We're just talking about that interquartile range. And so I go uh, 20.25, my big number, or my Q3, if you will, minus uh, 11.25, my Q2, if you will. Or really, it's kind of that in-between part, that median. And we get 9. And so what this tells us is the middle 50% of prices are $9 apart. All right. Uh, are the data, I probably should say, is the data more spread out below Q1 or above Q3? And we actually already figured this out. We figured this out in the distribution of the data. We found that it's more spread out above Q3. Remember, this was, uh, this is above Q3. And you can just look at the number, oh, 24.5, and that has the 11.25. So it's more above Q3. It's skewed right. Okay. All right. Let's try another one. The double box and whisker plot represents the number of tornadoes per month for a year for two states. There's state A and there's state B. A asks us to identify the shape of each distribution. So let's talk about just state A. And so if I go four 
minus 0. So this is at 4 minus 0. And then I'm also going to do this upper quartile area, or this, yeah, this um, above 3. So let's see, that's at 14. This equals 4. 14 minus 10. This equals 4. Yeah, that's, that's pretty symmetric. That's like the same. versus B, which we have from 7 minus 4, and that equals 3. And we can kind of already tell right now um, that this is definitely going to be skewed. Um, and let's see, we got, this is at 27 minus... 19, that equals 8, and so that's most definitely skewed right. My whisker on the right side is a lot bigger. All right, which state's tornadoes are more spread out? Um, we really don't even need to calculate this. We can just say B, the range is larger. We go from 4 to 27, which is whatever, 23 versus 0 to 14, which is 14. All right. C, which state had the single least number of tornadoes in a month during the year? Explain. Well, the answer to that is A. Because A, the smallest data point, is 0. because we actually had a result of zero. In order to have a um, whisker that goes out to zero, we had to have a result of zero. All right, that concludes the lesson for today. Check with your teacher on what your assignment is. Have a good one.